Hey friends out there in YouTube land, Rob here. Today I want to talk to you about this camera right here, the Fujifilm Instax Mini Evo. I'm going to share with you why I think this is one of the best cameras that you can get given for Christmas or pick up for yourself or give to any photographer as a gift. Also, I think this is a camera that's suited for someone that may be interested in photography but doesn't really know if they are quite yet. And the main reason is because this has the advantages of being a digital camera with the fun and excitement of being an instant development print camera. And Fujifilm has created this as the next generation of cameras in their line of hybrid Instax cameras, this being the Fujifilm Instax Mini Evo. Now, the film counterpart to this camera, which represents the highest current uh, iteration of their analog cameras, is the Fujifilm Instax Mini 90. Now, that's called the Neo Classic Mini 90, and it is a completely analog version of this camera from probably five or six years ago, and it represented the height of Fujifilm's technology at the time. Here we have the Mini Evo. This is a digital camera that prints, like we said, using the Instax Mini film, which means that this camera itself does not expose an image onto the film directly. Instead, what it does is it prints the image on the film using a light printer. It's an LED light printer. And that's because Fujifilm Instax Mini prints, like you see here, the Instax Mini film is an analog film. That is to say that there is development paste in the bottom of the film that as the image ejects, the paste bubble gets ruptured and rollers spread the paste over the film. Now, as the film is ejecting prior to the paste being spread over, there is a light LED printer right up here in this area inside the camera that is exposing two or three lines at a time with light so that the image prints just like an inkjet printer or laser printer, except for no ink, light, because all of the development chemicals that happen for the development process takes place inside the film. That's what makes analog prints like this, instant prints, think Polaroid, think Instax, that's what makes them so much fun. Now, it's important to note that because this is an analog process that develops the, the actual image, and because an analog process isn't digital with ones and zeros, although the printer is digital, right? The printer on the inside is printing in line by line as the film ejects, the actual characteristic of development causes the development pace to slightly bloom a little bit. Because it blooms in a way that you would never see with the naked eye, you'll never see a digital image artifact on here like pixelation or blocking, unless you used a really, really bad image to print with in the first place, which you can do from your phone using an app we'll talk about later. If you're just using this camera under normal cir uh, circumstances, you will absolutely love its versatility and just fun. In fact, I've used this at many weddings. I'm a wedding photographer, and when my brides and grooms ask for photo booths, my number one suggestion is an Instax mini photo booth. If they want a photo booth with prints and they want the images to be used later, then I'll suggest a more traditional photo booth whereby I'll print prints there and give them the full size images later using a DSLR of some sort or a mirrorless camera. I've done many, many videos on this camera, so much so that some think that I don't actually like the camera because I spend a lot of time talking about why Fujifilm chose the sensor that they chose and the lens combination. Suffice it to say, I think they could have done us a better job, but not because of the Instax prints. These things look great. I think they could have done a better job giving us a better file, meaning a better sensor and better processing inside would result in a better file, better for use digitally, such as posting to Facebook or blowing up. If you're gonna blow up this image, which is really only suited for a credit card size image, you'll find that there's quite a bit of pixelation that comes about within it. If you're gonna go anything bigger in my experience than four by six, I don't even try it anymore. I just don't think that the sensor holds up. However, that doesn't take anything away from the fact that its intended purpose is a reprintable digital camera with a lot of features. And we're gonna talk about them now. So, do I like this camera? Yeah, absolutely. I love this little camera. It is so much fun. So let me share with you a walk around as we've been talking about it. 
The camera itself is designed to be used in portrait orientation. And as a pro tip, you're gonna get your best types of subjects when you're using it in portrait orientation. I find that one, two, or three people are probably the max that you're going to get in a small print like this without losing too much detail to make it unnoticeable. However, you can photograph however you like. Yet when I look at this and you see the images that I'm showing today, you're gonna to notice they're just one, two, or three people. I don't do too many groups. Also, you can use this as a landscape camera. We'll talk about some cool things Fujifilm did for us there. But once again, as a landscape, you're just getting a small thumbnail ca capture of what you're gonna see. There's not a lot of detail and that can be fine for what you're doing. You're just gonna to wanna to take more exposition types of shots. Now, let's talk about that dreaded thing that happens when you print an image that doesn't look any good and you don't like it. And let's see if we got one right here. Boom. This image was actually taken in the Fujifilm Instax Mini 90, the Neo Classic. And because that image was underexposed or overexposed here, uh, you'll notice that it didn't come out great. Now, this was a picture taken a couple years ago as I was doing a comparison after I first got this camera. And it made it into a couple of videos. But I wanna talk about this here for one very important thing. Because this is a digital camera and the Mini 90, the Neo Classic is not, this image printed automatically. So when I bought the pack of Fujifilm Instax Mini prints, there were 20 shots in there, and this is one of those 20. Because I'm using the Mini Evo, and this will be a benefit you'll have too, you won't have to worry about that. Because since it stores your images digitally, once it turns on, which is pretty quick as you could see, you can go and print whichever image that you would like. Just as simple as scrolling through, and then choosing one to print. So because of that, I think new users will find it just really attractive. And for me, I find it great because I don't have to print everything and I don't have to even have film to take a photo. Now, one of my long time, long standing suggestions is to use this camera along with your phone. And that's because there is a feature where you can link your phone to the camera using the Instax Mini Evo app and print images directly taken from your phone to your camera. Because of this, you're gonna have the best of both worlds. When you are out and about taking images for fun, you're just clicking off and handing them over to your friends. But then at the time that you decide you want to take a picture that's a little bit more important, maybe one of grandmothers at her 96th birthday or something, you can use your cell phone or even a Fujifilm Instax or a Fujifilm uh, X series camera to have the high resolution image and still print with either this printer or through your phone, that image. Now, the, it is important to note the Fujifilm X-Series cameras don't print directly to this printer, but you can sync the images from your X-Series camera to your phone and then print through this printer. It's just an extra step. If you don't want to do that, Fujifilm also makes a print-only version called the Mini Link Printer or Wide Link Printer or Square Link Printer, and you can use your phone or your Fujifilm X-Series cameras. Now that you've got that out of the way, we're still talking about all these things. What I'd like to say is that Fujifilm has thought about this very nicely. They've got a thumb rest right here for your thumb so that your index finger lines up directly with the front shutter button, which is great when using it in uh, lamp portrait orientation. But if you switch to landscape orientation, you've still got a shutter button right here up top, as well as that little thumb rest. So it works in either orientation and it feels great. When we look at the front of the camera in this particular way, we have a selfie mirror so that you can get yourself framed up real nicely. I find that that works very, very well, holding it at arm's length and then offset to the center just a little bit, meaning to your right as you're holding it. I generally take selfies with my left hand and I angle the shot off to the right a little bit in order to get uh, whoever else might be in there. I also set my self timer to a two second delay. It makes it a little bit easier to get the shot framed up in there after I press the button. We've got an LED flash right here and a countdown flash illuminator. This is gonna let you know when your self timer is going. Also, it's gonna add some autofocus illumination because the camera does have autofocus being a digital camera. Now, with all these things in mind, this LED flash isn't very helpful. Later on in the video, we'll talk about things I use, such as the WeLight S505, in order to get um, more fill light when I'm taking portraits and, and things like that. We also have this lens ring right here, which is really nice. This is gonna get us 10 lens effects that when we pair with 
the tin film effects on the very front or on the back of the camera above the LCD. When we pair with those, we get over 100 different digital effects that we can apply to the camera, such as a monochrome, which is a really great monochrome, light leak, uh, a canvas. We can do a split image or a half frame. We can do all kinds of cool stuff. We'll talk a little bit about that later as well. Guys, we're just a few minutes into the video and we're still talking about the things you can do with the camera before actually looking at them. If that doesn't get you excited, man, I don't know what will. Turning around to the bottom, we're going to see that we have a cover. You open this cover to show your um, micro SD card, which is down here, and it can be a little bit tricky. But there you go, you also have your charging port. Now I have one of the original versions. This one right here is now a USB-C. I'm using a micro USB because that's what it had on it when I got it. And that's your SD card that you can put in right there. Uh, speaking of interesting things you can do with the camera, you can also get this in a beautiful brown, which is really nice, although I think I could go either way. I like them both ways. Okay, we also finally have a lanyard, uh, a, uh, a lanyard hook right here. It comes with a little handheld hook. Let me see if I can get you there. Anyways, you just thread the little hook through there, a little fabric hook, and it holds onto it. It makes it easy to pocket or hold on your wrist, like for a wrist strap. As we go around to the back, this is where everything happens. We're going to go ahead and talk about these things so that you can see them as we're giving you the rundown. But we turn it on, you've seen it turn on again, it does not take very long at all. And you can see the uh, viewfinder or the screen represents the image that you're seeing very, very well. I will tell you that right now in the home studio, uh, you can see the colors in the back and it's pretty nice. You can see my hand, all that stuff. It's bright enough inside and in uh, low light, not too bright. But the minute you get outside on a bright sunny day, this becomes very difficult to see and angles off angle, not looking at it directly on are difficult. Like my point of view from here to my eyes is in that direction. I can't even see the screen. I can see a great reflection of this image right here on it. That should give you an idea about just how reflective the screen actually is. Okay. In any event, we've got our screen right here and then we've got our navigation wheel. The navigation wheel is actually a, a button. It, and I shouldn't have called it a wheel. It's left, right, up and down. From there, we also have our menu, which will allow us to go into our menu functions, which are pretty expensive for a camera like this. And I've gone through all the menu functions in a previous video, everything I know about the Fujifilm Instax mini video. If you haven't seen that, I'll link it below. And everything I know about printing with the Fujifilm Instax mini video. I'd like to share all those things with you again, but there's not been any firmware updates that changed that. So the information is still relevant, even though it's almost two years old. We want to go back, we hit the back button, which is the next button. We then have a view button, like to look at your photos. If you tap it once, you'll be able to scroll through your photos individually. Right, you can see it there, and I'm using light leak in some of these, it's really nice. If you tap it again, you'll be able to scroll through them in sets of four, and this can become pretty important because you're gonna have a lot of pictures. And you notice, it's not a very fast uh, response, but it responds pretty quickly. If you tap it again, you'll be able to scroll through them in sets of nine. Now you can scroll up and down here in order to make page loading easier, but you'll also notice that as I'm loading up one, two, three, I've just clicked it and now you see it go. So there is a little bit of um, a time delay and processing power that it's using just to get there. Now, as we get to one of these images, let's, um, let's keep going. I've got, a, I've got a lot of really cool pictures in here. I just want to show you what happens when we take one of these images and I can't see it, it's too small. Let's keep going backwards. Yeah, so I, I went with a channel called Adventure Charmed and we did a video about the Witch of Pungo. Go check that out. And these are images from that. So this is actually the, the house for the Witch of Pungo, uh, the courthouse and things like that. And so we're looking at these shots. These are some cool ones right here. So as you can see, we've got a monochrome image right here. And this image itself has a light leak on it. Okay, and this is Gina from Adventure Charmed. We're doing her shots. And we did those shots with the Fujifilm Instax Mini Evo, as well as the Fujifilm Instax X100, or the Fujifilm X100F, it's not Instax. Some of my favorite ones are ones like this, that I'm using a blue filter, which is a lens effect, as well as a film effect of a light leak, and gets this really nice, uh, uh, cool hue printed off. Let's see what we can, uh, see what we can look through. I'm gonna show you how to print one real quick. Oh, that's a cool shot. Yeah, I like that. So if we want to print this image, let's pretend I've got film in here. I'm pretty sure that I do. All we do now is click the print lever, just like you saw. And as I thought, there's no film in there right now. So I can't print an image right now, but it does tell you that's how you'd print. And uh, we need to add some film. So now that we know all that, the next thing we have is a plus button. 
If we were in the shooting mode, this plus button would allow us to go ahead and add a particular set of effects to our favorite list, uh, or it would allow us to move one of our effects in and out of the favorite shot. Since we're right here, we're still just talking about the screen, let's talk about what we can actually do with this image. This is pretty cool. Uh, we can zoom in by just pressing up. Now, once we press up and get to the zoom level we want, we press the OK button. Now, OK will confirm, but if we wanted to get this back in uh, the proper uh, orientation, we then push left, and now we can move the image around. So we have some post crop or post photo cropping that we can do. Press OK to confirm, and that's where the image is. If we ever want to reset the image, all we have to do is just press down. Pressing down will zoom out, and zooming out, don't forget, brings up the move command, which you can uh, access once you have zoomed in some way by pressing left or right. In this instance, we're just going to press confirm. We're good to go. And now we're zoomed back out. If we wanted to print this image at a particular um, state, we would press our menu button, and then we could make some adjustments to how we want the print to happen. Specifically, we could rotate the print, we could copy the print, we could erase it, but more importantly, we could come over here and change the print quality mode and the print brightness. Now, for human skin tones, I find like I like the rich mode, and most of the time, this is your only option, plus one, plus one and a half, plus two, in order to change the brightness of the image after it's taken. Uh, this is not the same kind of effect that would happen as you're taking the image, because it's going to adjust the exposure when you're taking the image, which will adjust the settings the camera is using, generally ISO, as well as shutter speed. Here, it's simply only making the print brighter or darker. So if you had a choice, you'd rather get it right the first time. However, brightening here a little bit can help. Okay, now that we're back there, we want to get back to the shooting mode. It's actually kind of difficult. The back button won't take you to the shooting mode. It will simply take you to the settings mode to show you what was happening when you took the camera. In order to get back to the shooting mode, this is kind of a, a thing where I think Fujifilm really lost track of what they were doing. You have to half press the shutter and then full press it. That will take you back to the shooting mode. Here's that plus button once again. And as you can see, now we have the ability to invoke or remove uh, a particular set of settings that we want to use. Press the back button to go back. We talked about it earlier, but we've got the film effects right here. And scrolling through the film effects, you'll actually see the image changing from black and white to color and all different kinds of film effects. That's a sepia tone. I don't know why we'd ever use that. And then we talked about the lens effects, but on the front, you can actually see as I'm twi twisting now, we get a vignette and we get what looks like a cross process kind of color. I can't read it from here. Uh, we get a light leaks. We got all kinds of different things, which are pretty neat. So a fish eye, uh, a, lens a lens flare, which is one of my favorites. And then uh, if you wanted to keep that, you could keep it and you could press your plus button to save it. Press cancel. Okay, we did talk about the film inject, which is the print lever right there. Let's move on over to the other side. Now, as we're here, you're going to notice we've got a tripod collar right here, a tripod mount so that you can put this on a tripod. It is offset, but that's okay. And that brings us back to the front to finish up with the on and off button. As we look at the top, the top of the camera, we're going to see a couple things. We did talk about our film effect, but we also have our print lever, which is our film eject, as well as our shutter button. This button right here is a quick access button and allows you to access up to three stored favorites. And this is our cold shoe mount, where we would mount with a cold shoe adapter, the S505, or the Ulanzi light, or some other light that you might have. Okay, we've talked a lot about this camera and you've had a chance to really get a look at it and just see how nice it is. Now I wanna to talk to you about how I use the camera to get what I get. First of all, Fujifilm Instax is gonna give you awesome special edition prints. So Instax Mini has the most of them and there's three that are being uh, kind of displayed that you can see right now. The first one is what I, my favorite Fujifilm Instax print, which is Mermaid Tail. Mermaid Tail is a glossy, metallic print and it's really nice and I like the way it pairs with colorful subjects at the ocean uh, or any other kind of uh, fun adventurous type of thing. It does cost a little bit more. All of these special packs, regular pricing is going to be between 10 and $12 and uh, you can buy them online or where I like to find them at Walmart, usually between 7 and $9 per pack of 10. 
which is a savings. You will always pay more for the specialty borders than you will for the plain white. Now, I buy the plain white borders uh, in bulk packs of 100 or 60 at a time, and I can usually get a pack of 60 for around 30 or $40, or $37 really is kind of like the average. And then I'll just price match that on Amazon from Best Buy or something in order to get that. This is by far the easiest way and the way I have the most prints. My favorite prints are actually black and white. I really like the black and white film uh, border because it makes the picture stick out and look really special. So whenever you have a black border print, it just looks different. And I think it's really cool. Here's, here's two of them that you can check out right now. So what we're saying there? Notice the monochrome on here is really great. So you can adjust your different settings prior to taking it so that you can get that really nice looking monochrome. In any event, we also have a confetti. I don't know if I have it here, but this one is like a, a light blend pack. I forget which one it is. I buy these whenever I can find them cheaply. I don't really remember what they are because I use so many at photo booths for my brides and I want them to have a big selection. And plus, if you're looking at a instant photo booth, this is one of the best ways to make some money with a side hustle or as part of your business because with the Instax Mini Evo, your images are pretty much guaranteed to come out great. And when you're spending, even with the white film, only up to 60 cents of print, you're only going to want them to print and buy images that you know are going to come out great. You know that with this camera. However, let's move into the pro tip section. When you use this camera, and we've kind of talked about those things, pro tips are going to tell you it needs light. Although it's got a digital sensor in here, which, which is great, it's a small sensor and it's not really that great of a sensor. So you need as much light as you can possibly get. Because of that, if you're setting up a photo booth, you will need external lights to make sure that they're lit properly. Otherwise, you will get terrible shots indoors with this camera in a photo booth setting. So add light. Also, when you add light, attempt to add directional light if you can. So I often use mag mods and I use grids on my lights in order to shape the light to make it go in a particular direction, just like here, so that I'm lighting up my area properly. I've got a backlight for my background, as you can see back there. I've got one that's purple and one that's blue. You can see the two of them. I also have an orange light that's coming down here as a hair light. And I've got another orange light that's coming from the back as a rim light. That's all for this shot to be done on video for you guys to see. I would light the area for a photo booth with this camera the exact same way because this camera requires constant lighting because it does not have a xenon flash. It has an LED flash and that LED flash is just not powerful. So if you're gonna use this on an indoor setting, specifically for photo booths, make sure you've got multi-point lighting. The next thing on the pro tips I'm gonna talk about is what about when I use it outside? Most of the time when I use it outside, I put a light on top of it. And I'm sorry, I don't have here my little adapter that would allow it to connect. But then this whole unit becomes that much larger as you can see. But this light is able to be turned on and stays on and is extremely bright. What this does is it fills the shadows that you would get when you're in bright lights outside, getting rid of the shadows underneath the eye. And in this instance, you can see here the light that's coming straight forward, not just from the, uh, uh, the sun, but it's straight on. This is hard lighting. Notice those hard shadows right here, okay? However, when we look at a light like this, let's get another one. We can see in the same environment now turned the light on. We've got, we've got two, one with the light and one without. Let me give it to you. Light off, hard shadows. This light, the S505, off, hard shadows. On, no hard shadows. So the two differences there is what we're talking about. That's how important the fill light is when you're using a camera like this. Any instant camera, specifically ones that are aperture priority or some not manual, uh, will require a lot of extra light. So make sure you know that. Uh, when we turn on our camera and go to photograph, we need to set our exposure. We can do that by pressing down. Well, that's actually gonna zoom in. We can do that by pressing left and then moving our on-screen menu over to the left and changing our exposure mode. I generally shoot with this camera minus two thirds of a stop. 
Turn your self timer on or off for up to 10 seconds. I always shoot with flash. Macro, I keep it on in case I need it, but you will have quicker focusing if it's off. And then I let white balance uh, when I'm outside be auto and inside I set my white balance to whatever the white balance is in the room. And so that's your pro tip on how to get nice and exposed skies that still have some color. If you use that uh, minus two thirds exposure tip as well as a light, then your portraits will look a lot better. Okay, we've talked about the pro tips. I think those are the important parts there. Let's now talk about something you haven't seen, which is what happens when you pair this camera with your phone. Okay. I'm gonna set some pictures up right here so that you can see. I'm gonna to try to set some pictures up for you to see. Okay. All of these images that you're looking at now were taken using either the X100F, the X-T2, or my phone. The phone is pretty simple. The app for the Fujifilm just opens up and we go to the Instax Mini Evo app and it doesn't take any time for it to load and it's on. Now it's already connected. Notice at the top it's telling me that there's no film in it, but if we wanted to do remote shooting, we absolutely could. Turn my remote view on and now Just move these guys out of the way. The camera is in remote shooting. See? Okay, so now that you've seen how the app pairs and just how you can set up the app, you realize that there are so many ways to use this camera. And the one I'm talking about is printing from the phone to the camera. And we do that through the direct print function. Now that you know how these images got on the Instax Mini Film, Check out what we've got right here. That's a, that's a beautiful shot of the Amada Hoffler. Printed on Fujifilm Instax Minifilm. Uh, here we have a couple from Christmas, a couple years ago. This was taken with the X-T2. And this is my son making gingerbread houses, cookies for Christmas. Here's my other little buddy. This was taken on the X-100F. Got a nice fedora hat he wanted to show off. This one right here was taken using the X100F of the Battleship Wisconsin at nighttime using a black mist filter, which is pretty cool. Long exposure, printed up right here, it's really awesome. And it may look a little darker on the camera or on the video than it actually is. Remember, this is a printed medium which requires reflectance in order to show contrast and color better. Uh, you wouldn't see any of it in a dark light or dark room because it's a physical print, so it requires light. As we talk about that, there's a couple more things I want to share with you on how we print. <laughs> Another of the photo booth images just for, you to, just for you to see and enjoy. This is what the camera is capable of on its own in a dimly lit environment at a birthday party uh, with the WeLight S505. Again, it may look dark, but I'm, I'm pretty hopeful that you can actually see just how nice this print actually is. <laughs> And then here's a shot of me taking a picture of my prints with the camera to show just how cool it is. You can see all these prints and my big beard. Um, some of the additional fun that we have with this are, this is that confetti paper at the carnival. You see the confetti? That's a lot of fun. Here's a backlit shot so that you can see. Here's backlit using light, just like we talked about. The We Light S505. Now, this doesn't get that bright. I actually did, um, use a couple of wee lights and we had a few guys that were standing there and holding their hands over, but we've got Gina on a skateboard. And then here's just a picture of me. This one was taken on my phone. That's me and one of my guitars chilling in black and white. A lot of fun. We've had a lot of time talking about this camera, but I think the most important thing I can tell you about it is it's fun and it produces really great images. One of the reasons that I've been so hard on this camera in the past is because of how close it came to being the perfect camera for the masses. A slightly better sensor and a slightly better file wouldn't have cost Fujifilm much more. And you would have had a camera that didn't require the use 
of an archival copy on your cell phone or some other camera. That's my biggest gripe with it. But as far as fun, I don't think you could have as much fun with this camera and $500 in a night in Vegas. Spend it however you want to. Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this. If you made it this far, I need your help. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to hit 10,000 subs here in 2024. Notice I kept that request to the end. So if you made it here, please help me out and hit that subscribe and like button. Also, if you have any comments or thoughts, leave them down below. I'd love to hear them. Guys, I'm Rob. I want to thank you for watching and remind you I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Bye for now.